communities. We're going to talk about communities today. And we have a special guest, Andy Hatchett. But before that, we're going to talk about why networking is so damn overrated. Okay, so I know I fumbled that in a way, but I'd like to see them do that and be live. And they can probably do it, but nobody's thought about doing it yet. And uh, if so, I'd like to see what it looks like and see if whether or not I might be switching to go live and possibly use it in a, in a VCP event. So we'll see. Good day, everybody, and welcome to Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties, which I know, I know, it's not Saturday morning all over the world but that's where it all started in southern california so we're, we're going to stick with that eventually we might evolve to the marketing smarties but it something kind of is lacking when i say that anyway greetings and thank you for showing up if you're viewing us live on youtube or in the the diy live streaming show.com website we are pretty live and we are monitoring comments in both areas, so welcome. My name is Roland and I'm the host of the show and uh, from MinMax Media where we teach about the minimum you need for maximum impact. And it's a theory behind which I do everything, really. It's, it's the theory behind which I live and uh, it's based on a few different philosophies, which we will talk about at another time so I don't get distracted from my own subject. And uh, we're here today to talk about communities, but we've got some people who are building their own communities and doing a fine job at that. So we'll start with uh, introducing to you Tim Longwell, who is with us in the green room, and he's planning on building a community himself in the very near future using the VCP plugin and a WordPress website. So come on, Tim, and tell us a little bit about yourself and say hi to the public. Greetings, everyone. I'm Tim Longwell from, uh, and I'm with Longwell Art. Basically, I am Longwell Art. <laughs> we um, we're making strides towards helping people gain contentment and happiness and um, enjoyment out of life through use of their creativity and. There'll be live events where we use the VCP plugin where people can come in. Some will be in the, um, yeah, some will be in VCP watching and some I'll have invited into the green room. And as we do these special question and answer and teaching avenues that to uh, help people gain enjoyment and an inner peace through using the creativity that we're all born with. I love it. And I'm very supportive of what Tim does because it, it, when it gets boiled down to the concept of helping people, helping others, and 
underlying everything that he's doing, showing people how to do this and painting and uh, stra strategies and different techniques and things. He wants to help people improve their lives. So when you contribute to the world in that fashion, I'm behind you 100%. Next in our lineup is Lowell Ann Fulsang, and she comes to us from Canada area, and she'll be able to tell you more about that, but she's got her own community building and her own show on Tuesdays is just fabulous. So Lowell Ann, come on in board and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, good morning, and yes, I'm in Canada, on Canada's left coast on Vancouver Island in Victoria. The just a beautiful morning. I was out for a two-hour walk this morning before our show. So um, what what do we do in the Being Your Own CEO community? Um, we, we try to explore and learn about and share and experiment everything or anything of interest to the solopreneur. Wow. So, and uh, what I love, uh, I just love about it, there, there are people from just about everywhere <laughs> that, that uh, come into the show. So it's, uh, it's, it's really enjoyable. And I got the note from Tim Longwell that I've got birds in the background, so I'm going to try and try and remember to keep my, my mic uh, muted. So nice to be here, Roland. Thank you. Well, only only because if the birds are in the background, I'm going to start wondering whether they're in here or out there. So, yeah, it might be good to monitor out, monitor them out of the uh, the scenario. But I thank you very much. Uh, this this next person we're going to introduce is actually our focused guest for the show today. And the reason we did that is Andy and his partner, Mike Daniels, have started their own community. And we want to know more about it. We want to know why it's successful. We want to know what they encountered in setting it up, the challenges. And we want to know what's being accomplished with this community. But he's going to tell you a little bit more about his, his community, which is called User to User Live and it's in Google Plus. And uh, Andy, come on board and say hi to the public. Good afternoon, or whatever it is, wherever you are. My name is Andy Hatchett. I'm in Hermitage, Tennessee. I do have a Google community I'm quite proud of. Uh, basically, it's users helping users. It has been from the very start. Uh, we do two live shows a day, 30 minutes, 10.30 in the morning, 8 p.m. at night. Both times are central. Anybody can drop in, ask any type of tech question they want. If you don't know something, come to us. We're more like a brain trust. We've got a huge range of talent in the community. Um, in fact, 8% of it is uh, our Google top contributors. I'm, in fact, I'm quite proud of them. They joined before actually I became a top contributor. So that, that really made me happy. Um, but, you know, if we don't know the answer, we'll tell you we don't know, but we probably know somebody who does. That's the short end of it, and we'll get into more of it later after Roland finishes his part of the show. Yeah, I, I gotta, <laughs> I have to decompress with uh, releasing my rant. So, but uh, we, we definitely, you are the epitome of what we want to focus on when we are indeed trying to build our own communities, and that's why I wanted you to have you here. It's really a pleasure having you, and you, you come so often. I really appreciate you being in the mix what we do i appreciate uh, you inviting me oh you're very welcome and you know you stand you have a standing invitation to be a part of the green room so um we're going to deal with more about the the concept of communities but before that we're going to talk about networking why it's so damn overrated and i and I emphasize that not because there aren't good things to be had in networking but because there's so much BS going on at the same time, and that and that's part of my uh, issue with it. But before networking, I want to do a little Roland's rant about what's going on in the sales world, and I'm actually going to share my screen with a, a document that I have put together to, to really show you what came at me this week. This, this was the content I just basically copied and pasted it out of an email. Uh, con by from Jim and Mike, and their product is called Pixel Blaster, and they call it 
the money making machine for $47. Now, you can't get to the $47 unless you read through this long drawn out sales letter, right? And this got pictures and bold print and colors and contrast and all this flashy nonsense to get you to drive down further and further and further. And, but wait, don't buy yet, you know, and all those things. But part of the part of the early pitch in this sales the sales letter is the the, uh, the concept that if you buy this if you opt in you will benefit how and here's what they say you will get bigger conversions more leads and sales you will captivate viewers and get higher retention rate you will get tons of perfectly targeted visitors to your pages in record time you will stop paying other designers copywriters and video creation tools in other words all the things that we prof professional professionally produce for our outreach and is increases engagement and gets viewers to interact and way more now let me unscreen my, unshare my screen for just a second. Please. Uh, okay. All these lines about getting bigger conversion stuff, all they are is tagging all the stuff that you want to hear. It's like, I want to be the recipient of bigger conversions, more leads, and more sales. So right away you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And the, the sales letters are geared towards guiding you through the things that you want. But the question is, what do they deliver? And when I looked at what they deliver, it was BS. And uh, they, they was a, it was a basically a video sales, I mean a video construct, a template, for you to take your video that you made, interject it in what they made, and be able to tag it with certain things. And one of the things that they gave you in this production sequence was a pre-made opener from a real live person. And gee, they've got a hundred of them. Now, not thousands or an unlimited amount. They have 100, one, zero, zero. Now, they had a hundred intros and they said, these are good for any business that you want. They're good for any business that you want. And we've got plumbers and we've got this, and we've got artists and we, and like, there are literally hundreds of thousands of occupations that people want to build an intro for. And you're telling me that your 100 intros cover everybody? So anyway, just scratching the surface on this, the, the fluff of these uh, pitches are just too much for me. I wanna show you one more than I had. And we're gonna go back to my share screen here, let me see. Here's the condensation of the uh, of the overall pitch, okay? First of all, the subject line on my email said, less than 24 hours to close. And then uh, I interjected here because this turns out to be a cloaked launch for Ryan's sponsored profitable traffic system presented by him and his female associate and company staff member. And I'm sure this is a well-designed webinar used to lead to conversions of this system, not what you benefit from it. It's made to sell the system that he's talking about. So I opened up the email and it says in very bold print, just exactly as you're looking at it there, the time is over, this offer has expired. Even though it says, this is your final warning. Enrollment for our brand new traffic workshop officially closes in this offer has expired but above they told us less than 24 hours to close so somewhere between the time they sent this thing and the time i'm reading it 24 hours is gone well i thought i read my email yesterday yeah i'm starting to get confused because it's like wow i didn't even have a chance to to opt in on this thing it's expired oh no what do i do then i'm reading down after it tells me the offer has expired, it says, time is running out. Don't miss your chance to join. Okay, now I'm really confused. Time is running out, but it tells me the offer is expired. Then I go down a little bit further. It says, 
once you enroll, period, it closes, blah, blah, blah. You have to wait 60 days. So if you miss this opportunity, you got to wait 60 days. But now it's telling me, uh, you know, what, what's going on? You, Oh, my God. Hurry, the next workshop starts in just a few days. Oh, now I'm really confused. Now, the, the point I'm making is, I'm not really representing this that well, is if you're going to make an offer, make it clear. Make it clear what's going on. If you have a deadline, make it all commensurate so the deadlines match and your message is consistent from start to finish. Right now, we have a reserve your spot. Starts in a few days. It's all expired. You have 60 days before you can enroll again, and all this stuff. And it, to me, it's bullshit. To me, it's absolute bullshit. And it bothers me that marketers feel like that they can they can use these type of strategies and get away with it. And they get away with it because. 80% of the receiving public is buying it. Now, I'm not saying that they're selling it at an 80% closure rate, but 80% of the people do not realize that there's only 20% of the internet marketing that's out there that's really worth reading, it was really worth consuming. And all the, 80, the other 80% has some flaw. Now, the flaw could be a pitch like this that's worthless. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's worthless. Uh, the things that they're giving you, we can do without even investing in their system. But Jim and Mike are going to sell these packages for $47. 1% or so will ask for their money back. Everyone else is just going to say, ah, oh, the hell with it. I'm not going to. So they're going to they're gonna play the odds, they play the percentages, and they're going to make money. And that irritates me. So. Enough for my rants for the day. Uh, if you see these things in, in your own case, steer clear. Don't buy. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And don't think, oh, maybe this is the one chance I had to make a million dollars because it's probably not. Okay, enough of the email rants. The, I'll, I'll put this in a nutshell real quickly, and I would like anyone else to contribute if they would like. I've been a networker for a long time. The tip and BNI and a lot of different things, I've, I've been there. I was the recruiter for the tip. I, I've been the membership chair. I've been uh, the vice president of the, of the chapter. So I've been involved with it. I was, I was well known in my chapter. And uh, I was known for bringing the most guests to meetings, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I did my job. But Inevitably, I didn't gain much at all from networking. So when it came down to it, it's like these are a bunch of good old boys getting together. And I say that, I mean men and women when I say good old boys. Uh, and they, they were wonderful, but they weren't really doing business, even though that's what they were there for. And then it occurred to me that, they're doing. They're not doing business because they're not being human. They're just there to do the business, and that is a real turnoff. So, the concept of networking to me is 80% bullshit, just like the rest of the internet marketing scene. And uh, when I went to networking meetings, it was to make the relationship. And it occurred to me uh, several years ago, before the Smarty Show came about, that the relationship was more important than the business because it's the it's the foundation for business to actually occur if you want to bring it back down to the bare basics you got to know like and trust people well that's accomplished by having a relationship with the individual and so it occurred to me that the best way to do that is forget the money forget forget the profit center and work on helping people. And when if you want to help people, if if they want to know how to fix their bike, help them figure out how to fix their bike. If you if, if they want to know where the local donut shop is, help them find the local donut shop. That's helping people. And it's not well. You see, you you're not part of my uh, my niche. You're not part of my constituency. You're not really a follower. Of my you don't care what I do. So go go find your own donut shop. You know. 
uh, but that's the attitude or in, in general of marketing. Whereas in communities, you build relationships and you help people. So the subject today is leaning towards communities. And if you start there, the business will follow. You'll find people who need what you have to offer and the business will naturally be there. But you have to be known for the person who helps people. And if you can focus on that, it's gonna give you way more leverage and gas and gain and influence than if you go out trying to sell your ass off. I don't know why people don't understand that. I know that the some people in the 20% will agree with me and the 80% can go to hell, I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, the concept is community. So we have Andrew Hatchett, we're gonna bring him on right now before I rant and rave away the entire hour. And uh, Andy, a little bit about your community. User to User Live is a wonderful community and people help people. You and Michael Daniels uh, present things on, all the time, experiments, presentations, on and on. So before I just get lost in my description, which will, will be non-focused, let's ask you about your community. How, first of all, how long ago did the community start and how did you get going? Okay, okay. The, the, the community, community started, started on, on January, January 6, 6, 2014. 2014. Before that, most people may or may not remember this, before user to user, I had another community called Mastery Hangout Chats. Michael and I were both members of Ronnie Benson's Mastery Hangout group. Ronnie was good at doing presentations and everything, but he couldn't spend a lot of online time. So I set up the Mastery Hangout chat group. To get in, you had to be a member of Ronnie's Mastery Hangout chat private thing. So you could come in. I set it up where people were online. We got test partners together and, and helped and all that. And because Ronnie's was a paid private thing that you had to get into, I had people asking, well, what about people that were non, you know, weren't users? What, what did the free people do? About the same time, Business Hangouts came out. Michael and I got involved in that. They had their own community on Google to help their customers and everything, but you have to be using their paid product to do that. So Michael and I were discussing a place where people could go just for free. And on uh, Christmas Day of 2014, uh, 2013, I decided, okay, we need to do this community. Well, of course it was the holidays and everything, uh, but I just went ahead and set it up. And then I told Michael I had set it up and made him go on with me. And we were supposed to go live on January 1st. I got a cold. Anyway, we opened on July, on you know, January 6th. But we didn't have a lot of challenges opening because Michael had his following. I had my following. I was well known in the genealogy community and in Ronnie's mastery group. So when I announced it, I had, you know, we had People just come in right away. We shot up to, you know, 200 people just almost immediately. And it's just continued ever since. The fact that I started out being on there from 10 in the morning to 10 at night, and anybody could drop in at any time to ask a question, that helped a lot too because there was no set showtime. I was just on 12 hours straight. I'd sit here by myself and do other things just waiting for people to come in, you know. But uh, that's how it got started. It, it's grown. Uh, it has shrunk. A lot of people come in. My community is like training wheels. People come in. They get up to speed on how to do something. They've got the knowledge. They go out and do their own thing. So while there's a core group, it's more transient than a lot of communities are where people just come and, and stay because once they learn, quote, everything I know, they feel confident enough they can go out and do their own thing. And we've had quite a few of those do that. You know, uh, I can't tell you how many people pass through the community. Well, Lowell Ann's still a member of the community. You know, Tim's a member of the community. Uh, you know, you're a member of the community. It's just, you know, it, it's just, you know, like I say, there's a core group that stay and 
the questions have fallen off because Hangouts and Hangouts on Air are being less used than what they were. Events were taken away, so we hit that lag and everything. We're trying to reevaluate how the committee can be relevant today's, for today's Google people versus the people that joined at the height of the HOA wave, as I call it which has now started to recede somewhat. But that's basically the history of how we got started. That's cool. And uh, I definitely concur with what you were saying about this, uh, the, the entire concept of, of uh, all, you know what, I'm, I'm missing my chain of thought, but I'm gonna bring on what Lowell Ann had a comment from the people. I'll get back to you. Okay. Go ahead, Lowell Ann. Oh, it's a comment from Michael Thomas. Because LOL, Roland, I'm surprised you weren't forced to watch a spammy video when opening this email that usually is combined with pressure tactics and is very sad and disappointing thing in my opinion. These type of things exist in all platforms, ugh. And I agree with you. And uh, Michael, thank you for that. I, I was forced to watch the video, but not until I clicked and went to the web page. And then the video was front and center and big and huge. And, uh, you know, probably they spent the most money producing that. But anyway, thank you for the comment. And we'll, we'll get back to our, our subject here. I mean, not having your challenges, as you say, to start off, uh, a lot of people are not going to have the benefit that you had of you having a following and Michael D Daniels having a following. And you combine the two and share the interest and something grew out of that that was very strong. But... Um, one thing that I'm aware of with your community is I stick around, I listen, I've always got an ear to the ground, so, so to speak. And a lot of people get help and they might go away for a while, but they come back because they know that they're going to get an honest answer. So they come back to the community, they ask, and then they get feedback from other people again. And it's a very ongoing thing because they know that consistently if they've got a question, it can get answered in the community. And if you or Michael don't know the answer, a lot of the constituents chime in and, and contribute. And indeed, people get their questions answered just because of the nature of the community. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, there is a lot of engagement that goes on within the community. That that I'm really happy about. It's not just me and Michael sitting there. And I mean, somebody's got a question, they post it in there. Sometimes they get six answers before Michael and I even see the question. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, and I'm thankful for every member that I've got. They're all so open and giving. It, just, it astounds me sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think it starts with the general spirit of what you and Michael bring. I mean, you know, it's like like attracts like and law of attraction and so forth. Um, you, you set your parameters for your com community. And you have certain things that they have to do. And uh, I, I know that you had a comment there, Lowell, and I was going to display it in a moment if, if you'd like to bring it back. And um, it, it's a well-managed community. And I think that if people had a problem or if you had a problem, it's easily managed because you don't want people who are derogatory or not really into the concept of learning and helping others. And if they're not, then... They're not welcome in your community. I, I feel really good about that because I'm in the pocket with you. I'm, I'm around to help people, and I'm around to learn stuff. So it's really good for that. So low end, let's see what we've got here. Oh, another one from Michael Thomas. Integrity, along with site management and maintenance, are the one, two, three for any type of advertising or marketing influence, in my opinion, Roland. And I agree. We'll leave that up there just for a second, actually. I'm sorry about that, because the you you mentioned Michael a one two three with that, and uh, and the one two three you mentioned was integrity along with site management and maintenance because site management and maintenance all the to dos or the processes or the 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 machine itself is all good and well, but it's what you do with the machine that matters and the integrity is the basis for all those things to be of any meaning whatsoever. And uh, whatever it is, whether you're a small, tiny niche or if you're selling bread, 
uh, whatever it is, the integrity of what you're doing matters most. Integrity matters most. And uh, so I would, I really appreciate your comment there. And uh, thank you, thank you, Lauren. Go ahead, uh, Andy, your show. Okay, um, talking about people just starting off with no following. The best thing you can do if you want to start a community, the very first thing you need to know is to know why you want to start it. If you're not willing to put time and effort into it, if you think, oh, it's going to be a fun thing, I'll just gather all my friends and blah, 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 and it'll grow real quick and everything, uh, welcome to Dream World. It don't work that way. You know, you've got to take the time, join some other community like you think you want to start one. Join one of those. Engage there. Learn how a community operates. Most people think they know how it, but once you actually own one and start operating, it's a whole different thing. So work, get engaged in another community, see what it's really like, know why you want to start the thing, have certain criteria for your members. Do not open it up to the public. You will be overrun with spam within 30 minutes. Believe me, I had that happen on one I tried to start. Uh, and set your criteria, state your criteria so the public knows it ahead of time, and then stick to your criteria no matter how much you're criticized for it. Remember, it's your community. You can do with it what you want. You do not have to to run it by other people's standards. Now, I get a flag for that sometimes, but that's just the way I am. And you'll come off with a much better community if if you can. You don't get rid of the barbarians after they get into the villa. You stop them at the gates. And that's basically what you want to do. You know, and that's the best advice I can give anybody. Learn by being a member of a community somewhere. Somebody may even ask you to become a moderator of one. That'll get your feet a little more wet. It's very difficult to build a following and a community at the same time. Build your following first. Get known in whatever community topics you want your community to be about. Engage with those people. Then when you announce yours, you've got a following that are more likely to come over to see what you're saying than if you just put out to your friends, I've opened a community, come join me. You know, it, it, you, you really got to do some planning ahead of time before you just do it. Absolutely. And you said, you, you said a mouthful there. The first thing that you started with was the ask why concept. Because if you don't know why you're doing it, you're not going to be able to sustain it yourself because you're not going to be able to lead people down a path to anything. And if you're not leaving, you won't have community. If you don't have a focused concept of why the community exists, the why is most important. If, you, if the community does not have a common goal or a common focus or a common issue, a common problem, a common solution, if there's not commonality in your intention, you're not going to have a community. They're, they're not going to, you're just you're going to have a, a gathering of people that just get together and it's not going to be cohesive and it won't do anything, you're lucky if you're going to have any any reason for people to stay or be a part of that community. But you have to ask yourself why. The first thing is this. You ask yourself why, because why are you going to spend the time working on a community and perpetuating and interacting with people? It's a lot of work. It is. <laughs> you have to be willing to do it. And if you're not really behind it, if you're not passionate about your subject, you won't be able to sustain. So that's the first thing. And then the the next thing that we we want to want to uh, focus on there is the kind the concept of keeping a tight rein. This is part of the work. I mean, if you if you allow just anybody to be in there, they're going to go in there and play regardless of what the where the playground is. They're going to come in and play. But if you keep the people focused on the subject and the purpose of the community, it's much more effective. And when you just let anybody in, if you don't have rules and you don't have regulations, then you become a social chat. And worse than that, you'll have all the, the trolls and the tramps and the people that you don't want in the mix of that. 
and as, as you said, head them off at the gate, make them qualify and know that they're agreeing to the same reason to be there that as you started the community. Exactly. And when that alignment focuses, then you've got a good chance of building something. So a community, uh, and we'll go right to you, Roland, a community, so, so many people are like thinking about the numbers, you know, the, 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 the Facebook friend syndrome. I got to get more people. I got to get a lot of people. I got to advertise to the world. I have to build my numbers. I got to get likes. And quite honestly, it doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't mean anything to have those numbers unless it's a cohesive group focused on the same spiritual concept, same theory, the same problem, the same health. Lola, you had something to add to this. Well, I was going to say, I know from the experience of my, my Google Plus community, uh, the rules are posted, and I would say that most people don't read them. And um, I, I don't, mine is not a public community. They have to ask to, to join. And I find that um, when I do the vetting, because I vet everyone that uh, that I approve, you can tell that they haven't read <laughs> read the rules. <laughs> and but um, and I want to say something that, that goes back to um, some things that you said about networking, Roland, because I really honestly believe that networking in your own community is is the same as networking online. The same rules apply and the same things uh, really work. And so one of the things that I find um, in terms of belonging to Andy's uh, community is that I, that's one of the few communities that I have set that community up asking for notifications of it. So I know when something gets posted. And so that, I mean, and that's one of the ways that you, you actually build the concept of networking. You find out, you find a way to get a notification so that you know when something has happened there and you can go in and you can respond in some way. And I find that people are asked to join the community and then they don't do a damn thing. And so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I should just get rid of uh, <laughs> some of the people that asked to, to belong to the community. So, I mean, it's, it, it goes back to this thing that you said, Roland, about uh, relationship building. I mean, why, why, why join a community if you're not going to interact with it? So that's my rant for today. <laughs> Lola, Ann, it's funny that you bring that up because I've got a policy in user to user. And uh, on January of 2016, we decided to cut Deadwood. A lot of people thought that Google took our members away. They didn't. We you cut them. Yeah. That we, user to user has a policy that if you don't engage in the community, Within 12 months, you are considered an inactive member and you are removed from the membership role. Now, you're not banned. You can always ask to rejoin. Yeah. But even if you're not a member, you can do the reading. But if you want to comment, you have to be an active member. And every month, the people who haven't responded within 11 months, I send them an individual reminder. You join the community. We haven't heard from you. Our policy is, do you wish to become a member? If so, post. If not, I'll take care of it. You know? yeah. So they don't they don't get cut without notice. They're reminded you know, that they yeah. need to engage if they want to stay there. But that's the reason, had I not done that policy, uh, our membership would be over 800 now. Yeah. It's, wow. present, it's presently at 130 because other people, like, and like I say, people come into the community, they learn what they need to do, and they go out on their own. Now, some do come back, some stay, you know, but it, it's like I need a new set of people coming in, and that's what we're trying to find out how to do. I have a feeling it's going to involve a lot of uh, live streaming. That's the reason I'll probably be moving a little bit away from the 
Chrome OS because you can't live stream except for the Hangouts if you're on the Chrome OS system because you can't download any encoders or anything. But now, so Roland, what's your next question? Well, uh, I've got, I've still got a minor stream of them uh, waiting for you. But I wanted to see what Tim was bringing in here. Lori B, how are you doing, Lori? She asks, define specifically what makes, oops, got to display that again, Tim. Define specifically what makes a person full of integrity. That is an interesting question, and we could probably go on for a while. And I love the question. Integrity, um, first of all, it's not meeting any standard outside the self that uh, that is uh, something like a chart that you could measure yourself to and say, that makes me full of integrity. Integrity is being true to yourself and then representing yourself to others from the same focus. I mean, being yourself, authenticity plays a big part, but integrity really has to do with when you extend what you believe to support others and you are good to what you say. When you say something and whatever you stand for, you are representing yourself with the appropriateness and you are following through with consistency. And I think that you, so if you're going to be bad, be bad. If you're going to be good, you're good. And you will get known for some level of integrity. And when you represent yourself properly, then that's with, with integrity. Now, the new, the new lamination above that is if you're, being, if you're working with integrity and you are also providing a service for others or a, a product that helps people, then you, the integrity extends to the product or service, right? So if you stand behind the product or service, if you back, you know, with some kind of a guarantee and support what you do that based on what you stand for, now your integrity is extending out into your business reach. And um, this also goes with integrity and friendship. Whether if you're going to be a friend with somebody, what kind of integrity do you represent of yourself in that friendship? And uh, sometimes it's not a matter of money or it's not a matter of, of time spent, but it is a matter of intention and attention to the people who are your friends and how you help people, whether, whether you're going to abandon them or whether you're going to stay on board and, and work it through, whether you could do something or not. Do you keep on the support? Do you stay there? That's des describing some aspects of integrity. But uh, obviously, obviously, the word is a big one, and it mixes in with everything we do. One of the things that uh, Lowell Ann said a little while ago that kind of kind of rang my bell a little bit, and uh, I would welcome anyone to chime in on this, is the concept of networking within communities, and that it's the same thing. Now, the reason it's the same, I, I'm making a statement here, and I could be very wrong, okay? The reason it's the same for you in and out of a community is because you are you, but it's not the same for everybody. Now, when I was out in the midst of networking, I think that I was more like you. I was out there helping people. I was out there trying to be something that I, mean, I was known for the person that's like, I don't know the answer to that, but go ask Roland. He knows the answer because I would give people some form of steering that to me made sense. So I connected people to people. I referred people. I said, oh, yeah, you got to go talk to so-and-so. And people met more people because they knew me. And to me, that was part of my integrity, and that was the way I networked. But not everybody is out there like you and me. So when we say networking com communities is the same thing, it is for us. But it isn't for a lot of people who go to networking meetings and are not in the community building mood because the, com the non-community builders are the ones that are not building relationships. They're just networking. And the, de the definition to me is like networking builds opportunities. 
community builds relationships. That which is more valuable. I mean, you could have a million opportunities and not take advantage of them. If you've got a community with 100 people, you've got influence and you've got camaraderie and you've got some kind of actual action that means something when it comes to people. Just networking doesn't mean a thing. So that's really at the base of my rant for the, the reason that networking is only 80% or is 80% BS and 20% and it's probably a lot, lot smaller. 20% is effective and important and makes sense. And there's a lot of fluff and there's a lot of waste. So to me, it was like cut to the chase, man, just build a community. And that's why for the last two years, that's been more the focus of what I do. I build relationships. I, I don't, I'm not trying to sell people stuff. It's not in the back of my mind. Gee, I want to edit your video. Gee, I want you to, can't, I'll give you a good deal. None of this stuff occurs to me. And if somebody wants to talk about that stuff, I'm, I'm all ears and I'm all mouth. But I, it, but I don't need to do that to start the relationship. And to me, that's the difference of what's going on with me. So anyway, uh, that's my, my rant about networking back again. Sorry about that. But you are absolutely right from the standpoint of what we do the networking and the meeting people and making connections because you have to do business. We have to do business. We can't not do business. We're you know we can sit here and give away what we do forever and never monetize anything. And interestingly enough, I think the universe would take care of us anyway. Now I know that this is a weird subject and a weird statement for some people. It's like, no, it's not. Until there's a sale, there your pocketbook isn't affected. Uh, nothing happens until the sale, you know, it's like, well, to me that this is almost a foreign subject because to me, the sale is not even secondarily important, not even tertiarily important. It's unfortunately down the line and that's not why I'm not rich probably, but I'm healthy, I'm alive, I'm happy and I'll, and I'll trade that for a lot of people's lives. So anyway. Uh, the, the further questions that I have for Andy. I'd like to know if you have a couple of stories that, that come out of specific things that people have done or ways that you were able to help people and it really blossomed in, into something significant for them or significant for many, whatever. And if you have a couple of stories like that, I think that would be really helpful to encourage people to focus on the concept of communities. Anything that you can think of? Uh, yeah. yeah. There's one, one that it, it, it overlooked, overlooked because, because things have moved on from that is when Michael Daniels and Heather Crafter sat down and devised the whole community centered thing. It's called the CCHOA, Community Centered Hangout on Air. There was a whole thing about bringing everything back to the community. You held the hangout on air and everything, but you brought the whole thing back to your community and everything, and that's where the thing really started. Uh, a lot of people were doing shows and stuff, but they weren't, they were only doing shows. They didn't have a, a community to where that you could follow up on that and everything. Uh, a lot of people took that concept and it's still one of the higher ranking uh, videos. It's a three part video and it's still one of the higher ranking on my YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of people took that and ran with it. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Pat Richard Erickson and Russ Worthington and the, they're very, 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 very big in the genealogy community, well known. They adopted that when they started doing their shows and, and stuff. They, they're members of my community, but they've done it. Uh, we There was uh, Sheila Strover in England. She is a uh, news specialist. Uh, she joined and, you know, 
was there for a while. She learned how to do her things on Chromebooks. I, that that was the neat thing. At that time, she and I were about the only people that were actually using Chromebooks to try to do this stuff. So we had a special relationship going on within that. Uh, there, there are so many that have come through and we've helped and then they've gone on to to do their own thing. Uh, Melanie Hall was with us. John Jerkowitz was with us. Uh, you know, it just goes, it goes on and on. I was one too. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. You know, you, you, you were pretty well grounded though in, you know, you already had your thing going. Mm. I mean, these people, they, they, they just started, you know, and in fact, I don't know whether you know it or not, but Heather and Michael are now doing their own thing on some Wednesdays around 8 Eastern time, as they say, <laughs> to give them a plug. And it's a, it's a really fun show. If you haven't watched it, you need to go see it because they're, they're, they're doing a, using a lot of different technologies in it, switching around, learning about stuff and everything. But yeah, and uh, I, I, the, the thing I think I'm proudest of is that the community is as vibrant as it is. We're a small one, like I say, we're, we're now at like 130 people, but I'm sorry, I would much rather have 130 people engaged than have a community with a million people where they posted one time seven years ago, and yet they're still listed as a member of the community. You know, uh, there was a uh, app called Community Meter. They used to work with the old Google Plus interface. You could run it on any community. You didn't have to run it on yours. You could run it on any. Well, I belong to 80 communities that I track every day. I would run that at the end of the month. It would tell you the number of active members, the number of posts, the number of comments, and the number of plus ones. Invariably, the top 10 in the list would be communities that had less than 500 members. You know, and Lowland, actually, yours usually ranked within the top five of those. Wow. You know, unfortunately, with the new interface, I can't run that anymore. You know, uh, I wish Google would come up with something like that because we need more analytics on the community so that we can follow them closer and, and, you know, fine tune them and everything. I understand there are some things coming down the line eventually that may help us, but I don't know when they're going to get here or anything. Yeah. But like I said, you know, I've got probably 150 people that have gone through and gone on to do their own shows. Yeah. You know, and, and they got their foot in the water with hangouts and hangouts on there in the user to user community. And I'm quite proud of that. That's cool stuff. Uh, I like that story about Lowland being in the top five. Um, what, you, what you're really describing is the, the percentage of engagement. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that that's a big term engagement. It has to do with participation and, and involvement and exchange of information between and among the members themselves. And uh, it's so often a misunderstood term. The, in, in Facebook, engagement is how many people clicked on your ad and uh, how many people liked your comment and stuff. And to me, that's the next step below engagement. Now, commenting is fine, but when you comment on the comment, then you stand a chance of maybe being engaged. And uh, engagement to me is like, isn't like, gee, I liked your thing. Oh, thank you very much. And then never talk to that person again. And uh, before we go on, we got one more comment. Core integrity in with quality communities, Roland. And I agree totally. Michael Thomas, thank you very much. Core integrity. And the, the, that's the concept of community is if you want to build that, the thing you're thinking of is like, I'm building myself a little family. You, you're not related to me, but I'm going to relate to you anyway. And we're going to build a relationship. I'm going to see if I can help you out. If there's anything I can do for you, let's, let's see if I can. Add. And I'm going to make an effort and I'm going to commit myself to at least asking, how can I help? 
and then at least following up and saying, here's a little something I can do. I can't do anything, but I can sympathize with you and we can both look for the, the solution together. Let's ask so-and-so, let's share this, let's find a resource, let's find the authority and learn about this for everybody. And that's what a community does and that's what family does. So when you talk about community, we're talking about the extended family that may only have the connection of a certain concept, but within that concept, you function with integrity and completeness to really help people. And that's what I like about communities. And so that, that takes the ease off all the rants that I made today <laughs> and uh, so forth. And I thank you very much for helping us out with the comments, you guys, uh, Lowell Ann and Tim. I, the Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties was based on the concept of communities over two years ago. Um, the, we, we were coming out of the networking lineup and I quit every networking group that I knew of and, uh, and so forth. I even quit meetups because it, with a meetup, I could have a meetup in my, right, right here, right? And I could invite people into my living room. And you know, they came in once or twice and uh, most of them never showed up again. And after a while it was like, Meetup is also overrated. Well, I found out, you know, meet, meetups have a life expectancy of about three months. And uh, part of it is because the people are, that are forming these things are not trying to form relationships. They're just trying to meet up people and network. Sorry about that. And uh, that that's the problem with most groups and get togethers is your, your focus is not tightly enough on a, on a subject, the solution. And if people are just gathering around trying to figure out how to make money, it really doesn't work. And uh, so that, that's my conclusion with that. We have a comment coming through with Lowell Ann from Dr. Margaret. How you doing, Dr. Margaret? I'm here now, but was just on the other G Plus page, haha. -ha. No one wrote back to me, so I finally figured it out. I was just listening. And that's, uh, that's my fault. I usually make a comment just before the show starts to please remember to go to the uh, event page on the VCP plugin, which is DIY Live Streaming Show. And I'm very sorry that I, we, <laughs> you were there chatting with yourself. And um, yeah, we don't monitor the comments on the event page in Google Plus. Google Plus has messed with me so many times that I just figured, Okay, well, I'll use you for the invitations, but other than that, we're not going to spend any, any time there. <laughs> and although I, I like the, the comment stream, as it used to be when the events were primarily focused on the event pages, that was the best we had, right? And we did well with them. But um, we've had to move on to something that we feel is a bit more reliable and focused and indeed in our own websites. So that was the big... Uh, bridge that we crossed with that but dr margaret sorry we left you behind over there left you all alone and thank you for joining us here well anyway any last minute uh things that you might add andy regarding uh any important things that people should think about that we might have not have talked about when when they're thinking of forming a community what are the most important things what, what should we not forget the, 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 the three, three most, most important, important things. things. Know why, why you do it. it. Expect <laughs> slower growth than what you think you're going to get because it will happen. And know what criteria you want for your members and why you want them. And once you establish them, stick to them. You have to be a hard nose to run a successful community. You can be nice, but you've still got to hold to your principles. Otherwise, you're selling out. It's just that simple. Those are, those are, that's really good advice. And uh, the sticking to the principles is probably, of the three, going to be the hardest thing. I mean, most people will think uh, building a community, unless they're just thinking to themselves, I just say I, I need the camaraderie, I need the family, I need the interaction, I'm going to build a community. And uh, if that's the case, 
they may or may not be successful, but if you're running a community for a reason, it has to have rules and regulations and it has to have guidance. It has to have leadership. And that's what those rules and regulations are all about, guidance and leadership. And if you have those things, then you've got a way to, to lead. You've got some tools to enhance the leadership. And by, by all means, a community needs leadership. And it could be a person, it could be a group of people, it could be the entire community focusing on a subject that could be enough leadership, but it's got to have focus. And for that, we have to have rules and regulations too. That's probably the, the most important things. And I think the underlying thing with all of this is if you're going to have a community, you have to have a cause. You have to have a reason. And it all starts there. Well, I think that we covered the, the subject very well. Andy, thank you very much for being here and telling us the, the concepts that you uh, encountered with the user to user live community. I, I encourage everyone to go check it out and see if you, it might be a good fit for you. And uh, whether you think so or not, it probably is. But whether you get to stay or not depends on you. <laughs> so let's, let's say it's uh, been a really good day talking about communities. And we will talk about communities more in the future. And I promise to keep my ranting and raving about networks to a minimum. And, uh, but I may, not, may or may not <laughs> keep that uh, promise exactly as you would like me to but we'll do our best. So uh, that's that's going to be it for Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties on Mar uh, May 27th, 2017. Everyone, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank <clears throat> you.